As gas prices rise, people are looking at more practical options, and one of the fastest growing segments in the auto industry is the entry level luxury crossover segment. This is Infinity's entry into that market, the EX35. It competes with the BMW X3, the Volkswagen Tiguan, Acura RDX, and the soon to be released Audi Q5. This is really going to appeal to those buyers that want something a little bit smaller, more affordable, but they don't want to give up luxury amenities. The EX35 is based on the popular G35 sedan. I tend to look at this as a tall wagon rather than a small SUV, even though it shares a remarkable resemblance to the larger Infiniti FX utility vehicle. The EX starts at just over $40,000, and when it's fully equipped, it hits the $55,000 range. Now, the RDX and the X3 are more expensive, and the pricing for the Q5 hasn't been set yet. Here's what you get for your money. The EX comes with 17-inch wheels or optional 18-inch wheels, scratch shield paint that enables the paint to blend into small scratches, fog lights, keyless entry and start, eight-way power driver's seat, heated leather seats, leather wrap, tilt and telescopic steering wheel with audio controls, XM radio and an auxiliary jack. The EX is well equipped and it can be fitted out with a long list of extra features to tailor it just the way you like. To look up the features and to compare it to other vehicles in this class, you can go to our website. Now, they call the EX35 a personal luxury coupe with personal refinement. Why do they call it personal? because of space. You see, this EX has all the goodies, sat-nav, Bluetooth connectivity, backup sensors, and so on. But the one thing that you can't buy as an option is extra space. This has to be a personal luxury vehicle because there's just not enough room for a family. Definitely a better vehicle for a single person or a couple. The back seat has next to no legroom. It's pathetic, and because of the slope of the roof, the headroom is lacking as well. The rear cargo area is minimalist. Not much room for car seats, kids, strollers, or a dog. This is all about the driver. The front doesn't fare much better either. Now, sure, the dash is very pleasant to look at. It's got all the luxury buttons and features, and it looks very luxurious. But again, space is an issue. Even for a small person like me, I find the cabin to be a bit claustrophobic. There's not a lot of space between the door and the console. The seats aren't very wide, and there's not a lot of headroom either. I really don't think that bigger people will be very comfortable. Now, Lacey and I had a chance to take the CX out on a bit of a road trip, and both of us commented that after a while, this passenger seat wasn't that comfortable. Okay, we pointed out the negative, the main negative on the EX. Now we're going to switch to one of the reasons why you should consider buying this car the way it drives. As we mentioned before, the EX is based on the G35 sedan, which is one of the best entry-level luxury sedans on the market. It offers great value, power, and handling, and the EX really picks up on the trend. It uses the same 3.5-liter V6 with 297 horsepower and 253 pound-feet of torque. We've gone on record and said that this is one of the best V6 engines in the market today, and it doesn't disappoint in this vehicle. Power is brisk at all speeds. The EX moves out with purpose and it passes with ease. It isn't a big utility vehicle, so it benefits from its smaller dimensions. Even though the EX is based on a car platform and it has smaller dimensions, it still feels like you're driving a larger vehicle. I like the fact that you're sitting up a little bit higher and you've got a very commanding view with no blind spots. It's a very, very smooth car to drive and you really know you're driving a luxury vehicle. Infinity vehicles are made by Nissan and the new Nissan Murano and the new Nissan Rogue both come with continuously variable transmissions. This Infinity, however, has a conventional five-speed automatic, which is beautiful. Crisp upshifts, crisp downshifts, getting the most out of this beautiful engine. It's also adaptive. You can drive it in a cruised, relaxed way. When you put your foot into it, it becomes more aggressive. It really is an excellent job. Well done, Infinity.
One of the best things about the G35 is the way it moves and handles. The EX is only slightly heavier with independent suspension on each corner with the G35 front end and the larger FX rear end. It all works together very well, offering just the right balance of comfort and performance. Steering feel is good, none of the numbness you might get in other products. The auto industry has done a great job of marketing vehicles to people and telling them it's something when it really is something else. Really what this is, is a G35 station wagon. If you call it that, they wouldn't sell any. They come out with, it's a crossover. It's a luxury coupe. Now people are thinking, hmm, that's something I can get behind. For somebody that likes the idea of having a G35 sedan but wants a little bit more room, like a station wagon, they can go skiing, they can maybe put a small dog back there, they can use it in a pinch for extra people. It offers them a much bigger world. Just don't call it a station wagon. That's what it is. So the EX has a few issues, mostly around space, but Zach, do you think that it should stop people from having a look at it? Absolutely not. You should look at it because it is a subjective thing, space for one family, it's not enough room for another family, it's plenty or for a couple, whoever's looking at this vehicle. And one reason you should look at it, and the top of my likes, is the engine and the transmission derived from many of the other Infiniti products, especially the basis of this car, the G35. It really is a wonderful driving machine, it handles beautifully, also it's got a beautiful finish on the inside and I think the price is attractive especially when you compare it to other vehicles like the RDX one of its main competitors on the downside coupe who are they kidding it's not a coupe it's a four-door crossover with a hatch on the back uh, also the space we've touched on that already and the other thing for me is styling I don't know it looks a little bit forced trying to look like the bigger FX and the styling kind of just misses the mark for me you know what, Zach, I disagree with you. I really like the styling. It's very unique and I think it stands out. I really like the handling and it's very smooth and you can really tell that you're driving a luxury vehicle. On the downside, I know we've touched on it before, but a big turnoff for me is the size. It's just not a very usable space. It's not very functional. You know what, I think they've come up with luxury personal coupe because it's probably gonna sell a lot better than G35 station wagon. For complete specs, go to our website at drivingtelevision.com.